Welcome back to the show. We are now joined in the studio by Dakota Shoots, AKA Kota, the rider and team principal of Dubai Electric Scooter Cup. Kota, good to see you, my brother. Nice to meet you. Nice one, man. So tell us more about the Electric Scooter Cup. I didn't even know about this. Yeah, so it's a new thing by the Micromobility for Sport, and basically Dubai Sports Council has come together to bring the first Electric Scooter Cup to a central location in Dubai, it's gonna be pretty awesome. Wow, so you have one here and I heard it goes ridiculous speeds. Yeah, it's crazy. This scooter can get up to 140 kilometers an hour. <laughs> 140 kilometers? Yeah. So do you wear a helmet? Yeah, we wear a helmet, full racing leathers. It's pretty extreme. Oh wow. my gosh, I really want to see. I know, it me too, phenomenal. right? <laughs> That's yeah. what I go. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't oh, go. Sorry. I, 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 I drove behind you. You do not drive those speeds. But it's like, imagine you're on the highway and you stick your head out the window. That's the feeling of the speed wow. you would be going. Incredible. So can you tell us a little bit about the competition? Like it's a knockout uh, competition. What's the... Yeah, so there's 16 racers coming on December 16th. The race head to head against each other. Um, usually it's six riders racing for up to eight minutes and it's always like elimination rounds up to the final and uh, it's pretty exciting to watch because it's very full speed and the event happens fast and the racing is even faster. Now oh obviously gosh. Kota you've had a long history with the traditional scooter, the, mm -hmm. the flips, the tricks, all yeah. that, you're a four-time winner and is it a simple transition from your traditional scooter to your electric scooter or is it a completely new discipline? Um, I'd say it's it's almost the same similar feeling in terms of like being on a scooter, but it's much different because you have to know the grip of the tires, how to brake, how to race with people. Because in any freestyle sport at a skate park, you're individually riding, you're not against each other yeah. all the time. So getting used to racing is a little bit different, but getting the feel of the scooter, we have an advantage compared to other riders. But do you feel like your history of uh, doing this sort of freestyle uh, mm -hmm. scootering, has that translated to what you're doing now with the electric scooters and the Yeah, racing. for sure. My history of riding a scooter almost all my life has made it almost common sense for me to race an electric scooter and feel like I'm one with the scooter because that's all I know. I mean, it's, it's, it's really exciting because you always thought of e-scooters as being things that were used only as utility, right? Yeah, to yes. go from A to B. Yeah. So I think I, it's amazing that now you're using it for sport, but mm -hmm. now there's opportunities even for children, right? Yeah. Teenagers and even, even actually all age groups yeah. to actually get more active, right? And how we could actually shape cities in a different mm -hmm. way, maybe making them more yeah. ga like gamified, right? Yeah. So that people enjoy but the, the and The main and goal fun. for the Federation is to help make micromobility more safe and more accessible in terms of making grassroots programs to help get riders from a two-wheeled scooter to an electric scooter to knowing how to get around the city safely. So it's a amazing platform for the future. So is it mainly city tracks or do you have like, like uh, do you do it in stadiums or how does it normally work? Usually we utilize city tracks because for example, Dubai is putting on this awesome event and they'll give us a location that's central that is very hard to replicate. So we'll make a track within the, the boundaries and have the fans right against the racetrack and it's pretty awesome. Well, I was going to say that about the fans. So it is happening on the 16th of December, yep. this race. Um, and I want to know, just paint a picture for us. Are there a lot of turns? Is it like Formula One? Do you have to think about braking and turning or is it pretty much straight line whoever's got the fastest scooter? And how is the audience going to watch this? Yeah, so usually the track is between 600 or 1,000 meter track per lap. So has many turns, chicanes, sometimes elevation changes. Uh, the ground is different, could be brick, could be concrete. So like we're racing on whatever we're provided with. Um, we bring all our own barriers that are manufactured here in Dubai. So the barriers are maybe this tall, so okay. the bars can be safe enough. And if we hit them, that it's not gonna hit the crowd, but the crowd is no more than two or three meters behind those barriers watching the race live. I mean, today was the first time that I even heard about yeah. this new phenomenon, mm -hmm. I would say. So what, how do you see the, the uptake? Do you see more people getting involved and how do you see this expanding in the region? Yeah, so for me, a scooter in general is very accessible and people can understand and grasp the concept. So having people now have a platform that they can race something they're interested in and use in their daily life just for fun. It could be a Segway scooter, Xiaomi, but to understand that there's a higher level and we could do grassroots programs for people with entry level scooters for scooters we provide or sanction or things like this. So the scalability for making safe 
like sustainable racing is it's a good future. Gota, how big is this sport? Like, uh, what, what's the competitive competitive level at? There are a lot of people. Are we sitting with the best e-scooter racer in the world? Um, so the sport's re relatively new in terms of us sanctioning events, but uh, I've been competitively pretty good in my life. So we'll see on the 16th <laughs> how it goes. But um, we'll have 16 of the world's best racers that were hand selected for this event because um, Dubai really made it special that we made special scooters for this event, special track barriers, everything. So it's specifically made for Dubai. That's incredible. Kota, thank you so much for joining us today. Yep. Thanks for having me. But for right now, Amy, it's time for the quiz, isn't it? It is indeed. Baharash, are you ready? Because we're going to get oh. to know you a little bit better. Yeah, the right. spotlight's on you <laughs> okay. now. So, so it's DXB in 60. Okay. And we're going to get to know you. So we're going to put 60 seconds on the clock. All right. Quick fire questions. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, I'm very nervous. Okay. And on the clock now, one thing that you cannot live without. Oh, uh, my work. Okay, good question. Your motto in life and work? Enjoy it. Your hidden gem in Dubai? Uh, courtyard. Very good. Your inspiration in life? Uh, my my uh, late father. A book that you're reading at the moment? Uh, I Had to Survive by Roberto Canessa. Very nice. Top series that you've watched this summer? Um, oh, uh, pass. <laughs> it's too busy. Podcast <laughs> recommendation. <laughs> Uh, podcast pass. <laughs> if you could hang with someone for 24 hours, who would it be? You guys, of course. Oh. Hey. Right answer. <laughs> and the most interesting person that you've met in the city? Oh, um, actually, the author uh, of the book that I'm reading, his son, came all the way from, Ar from Argentina. Okay. Uh, sorry, from uh, Uruguay. Okay. To incredible. Dubai. So I met him and he even hand delivered his book, signed. So I think, I think, um, very inspiring person. Incredible. And last question. Why Dubai? Uh, good question. Actually, it goes back to my childhood. Um, after I migrated from Iran, Dubai was one of the first places that we actually came. So I did some schooling here and it just stayed with me, right? So it's given me probably the best opportunities in life when it comes to work. Yeah. And it's probably the most innovative city, I would say, in the whole world. Yeah, so, I think we can all agree with that. Like, Dubai's given us all so many opportunities. Thank you so much, Baharash. It was lovely to get to I know should, you. I should better. read more podcasts and watch more series. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so. yes, that's your homework. <laughs> and watch our show more as well. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for joining us, Baharash. It's been really good. Cheers, man. OK, so now let's take a sneak peek at our local artist who's going to be performing on tonight's show. Hi, I'm Jay Bellamy and I'm very excited to perform in DXB today.